time of year that you hear lots of stories about the fairies. You might hear stories about leprechauns that come from Ireland, the leprechauns, the fairy shoemakers. You might hear stories about brownies who are the house fairies who live up in Scotland. Or you might hear the stories of the fairy queen who lives in England. Now, a lot of these stories are told by ordinary people about their personal encounters with leprechauns and brownies and fairies. But then there's a whole other set of stories that were written by authors using fairies as characters in stories or plays. Shakespeare wrote a lot of plays about witches and fairies. And this is a story of that kind. Though this is a story about fairies, it's also a story about jumping rope. Now, uh, do you all know the jump rope rhyme, Teddy Bear? Yes. yes. OK, let's do Teddy Bear. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, turn around. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, touch the ground. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, show your shoe. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, that will do. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, go upstairs. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, say your prayers. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, turn off the light. Teddy Bear, Teddy Bear, say good night. Well, this is my very favorite story of all times. And the name of this story is Elsie Piddock Skips in Her Sleep by the English author Eleanor Farjean. Now, Elsie Piddock lived in Glynn, under Mount Caburn, where a lot of other little girls lived too. They lived mostly on bread and butter because their mothers were too poor to buy them cake. When Elsie was, was just a little tiny baby, lying in her cradle, outside her window in the lane, she could hear the big schoolgirls jumping rope. And she heard the slap, slap, slap of the jump rope hitting the ground. And she heard the tippity-tap, tippity-tap, tippity-tap of the jumper's feet. And she heard the mumble, lumble, lumble of the jumper's ropes saying a rhyme that the skippers could skip to. Now, when she got to be a bigger girl and could understand words, that mumble, lumble, lumble turned into words that went like this. Andy, Spandy, sugar de candy, French almond rock. Bread and butter for your supper's all your mother's got. The second part of the rhyme went twice as fast as the first part. And Elsie, sitting in her little high chair, always ate her bread and butter in time to the rhyme. And she wished she had some sugar de candy to eat during the first part of the rhyme. But she never did. <laughs> now, when Elsie was three years old, she asked her mother for a skipping rope. You're too little, said her mother. <laughs> Wait till you're a bigger girl. Elsie didn't say anything. She just pouted. But that night, in the middle of the night, Mr. and Mrs. Piddock were awakened by something going slap, slap, slap. And there was Elsie in her nightgown, skipping rope with her father's suspenders. <laughs> she skipped 10 times before she tripped and fell. And her mother picked her up, and she said, there, there, your knee doesn't hurt too much. Will you fell and tripped on it? And, and tomorrow morning, your father will make you a skipping rope of your very own. And Mr. Pittick was as good as his word. Before he went to work the next morning, he took a little rope, just the right size for tiny little Elsie, and he fit two wooden handles on each end. And Elsie grabbed that rope, and she went outside, and she skipped all day long, scarcely stopping to eat her dinner of bread and butter or her supper of bread and butter. And after supper, 
when the big school girls came out to skip in the lane. Elsie skipped with the best of them. And Joan Challen, who was the champion skipper of them all, said, why, look at little Elsie Pinnock skipping as never so. And they all called their mothers to come and see her, and all the mothers said, well, little Elsie Pittock is a born skipper. Now, by the time Elsie was four, she could skip better than all the older girls, whether in Andy Spandy or Lady Lady Drop Your Purse or Charlie Parley Stole Some Barley. And by the time she was five, her name and fame had spread for miles around. And by the time she was six, the fairies had heard of her. Now, the fairies were very fond of skipping themselves. And every night in the moonlight, they would gather on the top of Mount Cabern, and they would chant the high skip, the sly skip, the skip like a feather, the long skip, the strong skip, and the skip all together, the fast skip, the last skip, and the skip double, double, the tow skip, the slow skip, and the skip against trouble. Now all of those skips had special magical meanings, and they were taught to them by their skipping master, whose name was Andy Spandy. Now, Andy Spandy was very proud of his fairies. He thought they skipped better than the fairies from all around those parts. And one night, he praised Fairy Fleetwood for skipping well, and he scolded Fairy Heels of Lead for skipping badly. And Heels of Lead said, huh, there's a little girl in Glynn who could skip Fleetwood round the moon and back again. A born skipper she is, and she skips as never so. What is her name? said Andy Spandy. Her name is Elsie Piddick, said Fairy Heels the Lead. Bring her here, said Andy Spandy. And Fairy Heels the Lead went to Elsie's house and stuck her head in at Elsie's bedroom window. And she said, Elsie Piddick, Elsie Piddick, there's a skippy match on Cabern. And Fairy Fleafoot says she can skip better than you can. Now, Elsie was fast asleep, but somehow those words worked their way into her dream. And still sleeping, she got up out of her little bed picked up her skipping rope, and in her nightgown, followed Fairy Heels the Lead to the top of Mount Cabern. And there was Andy Spandy and all of the fairies. And Andy Spandy said, skip, Elsie Piddick, and show us what you're worth. And Elsie twirled her little rope, and she skipped Andy Bandy, sugar dee candy, French almond rock, bread and butter for your supper, all your mother's got. Hmm, said Andy Spandy. Very good, as far as it goes. Now let's see how far it does go. Stand forth, Elsie, and flee foot for the long skip. Now, if Elsie had been awake, she wouldn't have known what he meant. But since she was sound asleep, she understood him perfectly. She skipped along the ground as far as she could go, about 12 feet. And then Fleafoot did the long skip, and she skipped right out of sight. Hmm, said Andy Spandy. Stand forth, Elsie, and Fleafoot for the strong skip. Once again, Elsie understood exactly she skipped very strongly, digging her heels into the dirt. And then Fleafoot did the strong skip, and she sank into the earth up to her waist. Hmm, said.
said Andy Spandy. Now, let us see you do the skip all together. And all of the fairies ran and got their skipping ropes, and they all skipped hour after hour after hour. So one by one, they dropped out, out of exhaustion. But Elsie never stopped skipping. When the first light of dawn shone in the sky, she was the only one left. And Andy Spandy said, Elsie Pittick, you are a born skipper. Come to the top of Mount Caburn once a month when the moon is new, and I will teach you all the magical fairy skips. And at the end of a year's time, I warrant there won't be a fairy or a mortal who can touch you. So once a month, Elsie, sound asleep in her nightgown, grabbed up her little skipping rope and went for her private skipping lessons with Andy Spandy. And he taught her all of them, the, the long skip and the strong skip and, and the toe skip and the slow skip and the fast skip, but never the last skip. And at the end of a year's time, he said, I have taught you all I know. Give me your skipping rope and you shall have a prize. And Elsie handed him tiny little rope and he took each wooden handle and licked it and one of the handles was sugary candy and the other was French almond rock. There, he said, no matter how much of this candy you eat, it will never grow less and you will have candy for the rest of your life. But you can only do those magic fairy skips I taught you while you were little enough to use this rope. When you grow too big, you will have to put this rope aside, though you will still skip better in the mortal way than any other girl. Aren't I ever going to skip for you no more? said Elsie Piddick in her sleep. But Andy Spandy didn't answer, for the sun had risen and all of the fairies had disappeared. Well, if Elsie had been famous before, you can imagine how famous she was now, that she could do all of those special tricks. People came from miles around to watch her skip over the oak tree in the Lord's Park or, or skip through the lattice of a leaf. And when times were hard, and they often were, and the people were all hungry. Elsie would say, skip against trouble, and everyone would watch her and burst out laughing and applauding. And when all of the girls were gathered together, and they were all skipping, Andy, Spandy, Sugar D, Candy, French, Almond, Rock, Bread and Butter for your supper's all your mother's got, Elsie would say, it aren't all I got. And she'd give them a taste of her Sugar D Candy jump rope handle all around. And once a month when the moon was new, Elsie would lead all the little girls to the top of Mount Caburn and they would have a moonlight skipping party. But then Elsie Piddick grew a little bit and she could no longer use that tiny little rope. So she had to put it aside in a dresser drawer and get a, a longer one. And the girls began to tease her to do the tricks that she used to do, but she just shook her head and never told them why. And people began to say, ah, you should have seen her when she was a little and she could skip right through her mother's keyhole. And then Elsie grew some more and became a, a little woman and put aside her skipping rope altogether because skipping days were done. And then the Piddick family moved away to another county and, and soon people began to forget that Elsie Piddick had ever skipped on the top of Mount Caburn at all. But Elsie never forgot. She sat in a cold house with no fire 
and no food and chewed on the sugary candy that Andy Spandy had given her for life. Well, years and years went by, and that part of the country with, with the little town of Glynn and, and Mount Cabern was now owned by a new lord. This man cared for nothing but money. Everything he looked at, he tried to think of a way to have it make money for him. And when he saw the top of Mount Cabern so flat and perfect, he thought it would be a wonderful spot to build a factory. And he said to his lawyer, do I have the right to put a factory up there on the top of Mount Cabern? And the lawyer searched through many old deeds and documents, and he said, well, yeah, you have a little bit of a right. I'm not sure if you have a full right. You've, you've got about half a leg to stand on. So, so the Lord took offense, and he put it all around the top of Mount Cabern so no one could go up there at all. And all of the people were so upset because for centuries, Mount Cabern had belonged to them, and they could go up there whenever they wanted to. All of the men met at the tavern. And John Maltman, who was the leader of them all, said, well, if, if my daughter can't go up there once a month when the moon is new and, and skip it, it will break her heart. And my Marjorie's too, said, said another man, and, and, and my Elizabeth's, for nearly all of the men, had a daughter whose delight it was to skip in the new moon on the top of Mount Cabern. And there was a lawyer sitting there drinking a pint of ale, and John Maltman said to him, does the Lord have a right? Can he put a factory up there on the top of the mountain? Has he a leg to stand on? Well, said the lawyer, consulting many old books, only half a leg. Now, at that time, the best skipper of them all was Ellen Maltman. And the thought that she could never skip on the top of Mount Cabern was more than she could bear, so she went out by herself to the woods to cry. She sat there on a log, sobbing. She heard a voice, like a withered leaf, saying, crying for trouble, my dear? That will never do. <laughs> it's a big trouble, said Ellen, looking around to see who was talking to her. But no one appeared. It's, there's not to do cry. Oh, said the voice. You should skip against trouble, my dear. I'll never skip no more, said Ellen, crying harder than ever. If I can't skip on Cabern, I'll never skip no more. And she went on to explain how the Lord was trying to build a factory up there on top of the mountain. And the voice said, it's more than it will break the hearts. It cannot be. It must not be. What is your name, child? My name is Ellen Maltman, ma'am, and, and I do love skipping. I can skip anybody down, and they say I skip is never so. Oh, they do, do they, said the voice. Well, Ellen, run your home and tell him this. The Lord shall build his factory on the top of Mount Cabern, but before he begins to build, every skipper who has ever skipped there shall skip for one last party. And when the last skipper has skipped the last skip, he may lay his first brick and let it be drawn up by lawyers, Ellen, and signed and sealed. Well, Ellen went back home, and, and she told everyone what this strange voice had told her in the woods. And at first, it sounded like a crazy idea, but somehow, some of the determination in that voice got into Ellen, and the people began to think that it was the thing to do. And the Lord, when he heard the people's demands, burst out laughing, ha, ah, I'm going to have my factory up there after all. Let them have their stupid skipping party. So he had his lawyer draw up a piece of paper that says, when the last skipper skips the last skip, the Lord may lay his first brick. And it was signed and sealed. Well, it was the time of the new moon, 
when the great skipping party was to take place. And all of the people went to the top of Mount Tabor, and the Lord had had the fence taken down for this occasion. And the Lord went up with his lawyer and all of his friends, and there were other people there, others that they could not see. Andy Spandy and his fairy band, for their delight was to skip on Mount Caburn, too. So the Lord raised his arm and said, let the skipping begin. Well, the little girls skipped in the order of their ages, and, and the tiniest little three-year-olds started first, and they could only skip one or two times, and then they tripped and fell. And the Lord and his friends laughed at them, but the people were far too upset. This was a serious matter. They were not laughing. And then the girls got older, and the skipping got better. And in the thick of the school children, the Lord said, this is going to take some time. And when it was Ellen Maltman's turn, and she went into her thousands, the Lord grew restive. But even Ellen, who could skip as never so, at last tired and tripped and fell. None lasted even half her time. Then the, the teenage girl skipped, and then the young mothers, and then the middle-aged women, and at last there was only one woman left, a fat old lady of 73. Soon done, said the Lord, and the old woman twirled her rope and tripped and fell. Now, said the Lord, <laughs> I will lay my first brick. No, if you please, said a voice from the crowd, it is my turn now. And out of the crowd came a tiny old woman. You, said the Lord, who are you? My name is Elsie Piddick, if you please, and I am a hundred and nine years old. But as a child, I skipped on the top of Mount Cabern. Elsie Piddick, Elsie Piddick, the name went through the crowd, and Ellen Maltman said, Oh, Mom, I thought Elsie Piddick was just a story. Nay, said the fat old lady who'd skipped last. Elsie Piddick was no story. My mother, Joan, skipped with her and told me tales you wouldn't believe of. And Andy Spandy and his fairy team cheered silently, for they had seen the skipping rope in the old woman's hands. One of the handles was sugary candy, and the other was French old rock. But the Lord had never heard of Elsie Piddick, so he said, ah, well, one more skip for an old woman's bones. Skip, Elsie Piddick, and show us what you're worth. So Elsie twirled a rope, she skipped, and bandy, sugary candy, French almond rock, bread and butter for your supper, so your mother's got. Wonderful, said the Lord. Wonderful for such an old woman. But Ellen Maltman, who knew, said, Oh, Mom, it's wonderful for anybody. And Mom took a thing. She's skipping in her sleep. It's true. Elsie Piddick shrunk to the size of a seven-year-old fast asleep, was skipping hour after hour with her baby rope, which was up to all its old tricks again. Well, the woman never stops said the Lord after the third hour. No, she won't, said Elsie Piddick, signed and sealed, my Lord, signed and sealed. And hang it all, said the Lord. Skip or no skip, signed and sealed or not. She's mad. It doesn't hold with a mad woman. I'm going to lay my first brick. And he put the brick down on the ground. Now, said Elsie, for a strong skip, and she skipped on top of the brick, and it was pushed way down into the ground, and the Lord went into the hall after Elsie. And Elsie came up, still skipping, blither than ever, but the Lord never came up. The lawyer looked down the hall. There was no seeing him. He felt down the hall. There was no feeling him. He threw a pebble down the hall and never heard it fall. So strongly had Elsie Piddick skipped the strong skip. So Cabern was saved for the people forever. 
and the lawyer and all the Lord's friends went home, and Elsie Piddick called out, Skip against trouble, and everyone went home laughing. But that was not the end of Elsie Piddick, who signed and sealed, is signed and sealed. Not many people see her, but if you were to go to the top of Mount Cabron, you would see a tiny little figure all by herself, skipping in her sleep in the moonlight. And you would hear a voice, like the voice of a withered leaf, saying, Andy, Spandy, Sugar Tea, Candy, French, Almond, Rock, Bread and Butter for your suppers, all your mother's got. Andy, Spandy, Sugar Candy, candy, French, French almond rock, bread and butter for your supper, so your mother's got. She's still up there. She had to just keep staying there because that was the bargain.